What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack -a pack series before we jump into this crack -a pack I do just want to mention uh, we do have a giveaway going on right now for a Theros Beyond Death bundle If you are interested in, uh, in entering, excuse me, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel Comment on any video, does not matter which one, with hashtag Theros giveaway If you do that you are entered to win uh, We will respond to you and make sure that your entry is, uh, is tallied up with everybody's uh, The winner will be chosen on Monday, September or excuse me, January 27th. Uh, so feel free to enter. We do really, really appreciate all the support and all the uh, the awesome entries. So thank you guys so much. Now, let's jump into this Kaladesh booster pack opening. Uh, really, really like Kaladesh as a set for a lot of reasons. Um, lottery cards, get it out of the way now. That's the biggest thing. Obviously, it's very unlikely we're going to open one, but that'd be great. Hopefully, we do. Uh, other than that, though, there are quite a number of awesome cards in here. Chandra comes to mind. Uh, Pia and Kira and Nalar, I believe, are in this set, which is a really cool card as well. Lots of really fun stuff. Hopefully, uh, we get to open some really cool things here today. Of course, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. Uh, so we'll do the best we can to figure out what our draft pick will be. I drafted a little bit uh, of Kaladesh. Uh, I did play a good bit during the time, but I didn't draft as much during that time. So we'll see what we get. But our first card here is Terror of the Fairgrounds. It is a 5-2 for 3 and a red vanilla creature. Not super exciting, honestly. Uh, it's nice that you're getting so much power for that low cost of 4. It's the toughness that's a problem. You're going to be able to just burn it out with almost anything or trade it off for almost anything. And that's the problem that devalues this creature pretty heavily. Uh, unfortunately, if you can trade off with a two drop and you're a four drop, it seems very bad. The only reason this would be good is if you're already in a commanding position. Uh, and so you can really start, you know, piling on the damage for relatively cheap. But uh, generally speaking, if you look at the quadrant theory, if you don't know what that is, please go look up the article. We did an episode on it as well. It's how you evaluate a card in draft. Uh, is it good at these points in the game? There are four major points of the game that they, that that considers. Uh, this is really only good in a winning position, and even then, I don't think it's great. So I don't love this card. Definitely not going to be my first pick. Uh, Thriving Ibex uh, is three and a white for a two four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. So energy was a brand new mechanic introduced in Kaladesh. Uh, it was essentially a whole other resource that you could kind of tap into for different things. In this case, uh, whenever it attacks, you can pay two energy. And if you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, and so that kind of gives you an example. You can use that energy to boost up your creatures, do different things, maybe draw cards, things like that. Uh, a lot of really cool synergies, I will say. It, it kind of broke standard in a way with Aetherworks Marvel but uh, very, very cool mechanic for sure. As far as this card's concerned, don't love it. It's a bit of an investment to make it very good. Uh, it does stick around a little bit better than the Terror, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't do that much damage. You do have to spend a lot of energy to make it good. The one thing that you kind of had to be careful of and limited was spending so much energy on a particular card because they just murder it, or not that murder necessarily is in this set, but if they use any kind of removal spell on it, you wasted not only that card, but a lot of your energy on that card as well. And unless it's forwarding your game plan, it's not worth it. So things to keep in mind as you're drafting Kaladesh. Uh, don't love this card, to be honest. I don't think this would be my first pick either. Uh, Ornamental Courage uh, is one green for an instant untapped target creature. It gets plus one, plus three until the end of the turn. Uh, pretty straightforward card. A much, uh, well, I won't say much worse giant growth. Uh, it's actually quite good that it untaps it. That's a really, really nice thing because you can kind of surprise block, uh, which is great. Uh, and especially in green, you know, combat tricks are great and all, but a lot of people don't necessarily play around them all the time. Uh, and so having a combat trick that untaps a creature is very, very key, especially for only one mana. Uh, that being said, I still don't love this card. I mean, it is just a combat trick. You never want to take a combat trick first uh, because yeah, you may not be able to play that. It's not a reason to be in any particular color. So I'm honestly not in for this card, but I do like it as a combat trick. If I was in green, I'd be more open to this. 
Uh, fortuitous find uh, is a sorcery for two and a black. Choose one or both. Uh, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand or return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, both of these are pretty good. Uh, the reason I say that, uh, both of these sides of this card are pretty good. Artifacts were a pretty big part of this set. Uh, a lot of like really powerful artifacts are here. We had vehicles. We had a lot of cool stuff. This is a great card to be able to recur those and make your opponent deal with them again. Not only that, it also does the standard kind of creature thing. It is at sorcery speed, so it's not instant speed, which is, you know, whatever. But you could technically return two cards worth of value for only one card in your hand. That's pretty good. Uh, so you kind of gain a little bit of a, a momentum off of this. So far, uh, this is honestly the best pick in my opinion. I don't think this is going to be the card that we land on. I hope not, but I do really like it. So we're going to put it here for now. <laughs> Uh, Kira Vendor, I uh, hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 2-1 for 1 and a blue vanilla creature. Very, very unexciting. Uh, I do not like cards like this where it's very under... I say very, it's at least slightly understated. A 2-1 for 2 is worse than a grizzly bear. I don't want that. I don't want worse than a grizzly bear in my deck. So the only reason you would play this is if you're looking at your curve consideration, you don't have any two drops. Maybe you want to slot this in, but that's really the only reason I don't think it's worth it other than that. Ooh, Chandra's uh, Pyro Helix is an instant for one and a red. It deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two target creatures and or players. There are a lot of things that this card hits in this set. I believe servos and thopters, things like that are in this. Uh, so you can pick off two of those guys. You can pick off a small creature, uh, or you can just deal two straight damage to the face if you really need to. But you get to divide it up as you choose. There's a lot of flexibility in a card like this. Not only that, it's instant speed and only two mana. So two mana, two damage, instant speed, I'm in. Divide it as you choose, great. So I really, really like this card. I think so far this is definitely our pick. Uh, Cogworkers Puzzle Knot. This is part of a cycle. Uh, there was one for each color. It's an artifact for two mana of any color. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token. That's one of those servos we were just talking about. Uh, you can pay one in a white and sacrifice it and create another colorless servo artifact creature token. Uh, as far as these uh, Puzzle Knots go, I actually really like them. Uh, they're all I think decent. Uh, this is a little bit more underwhelming than I think some of the other ones, so I definitely won't take it over the Pyro Helix. Uh, but we'll probably see one or two more through the pack. They're they're pretty decent cards. They just give you a little bit of a, a solid two drop. You spit out a one one, you get another one one if you've got some mana left over one turn. It's perfectly fine. It's not a super exciting card, but they are very playable. Uh, our first vehicle is Renegade Freighter. Uh, it is a 4-3 for 3 mana of any color. Uh, whenever it attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains trample until the end of the turn. So anytime it's attacking, it is actually a 5-4 for only 3 mana. Pretty good. Uh, not only that, but you crew it for 2. Uh, so all vehicles had this crew mechanic, albeit with different numbers, of course. But tap any number of creatures you control with total power 2 or more. Uh, this vehicle becomes an artifact creature until the end of the turn. Again, we saw this uh, pairs very well with the bringing back of artifacts or creatures. Uh, obviously, technically it doesn't count as a creature, but uh, this works as an artifact. So it's actually a really nice uh, card to bring back. But this is a very aggressive card, uh, an aggressive vehicle for sure. Gaining Trample is huge uh, in Limited, I will say. Trample is not one of those, those keywords that you necessarily get very often. Uh, and when you do, you can really, really take over a board state uh, solely because you can trample over all of the opposing servos and opposing thopters, things like that. So there's a lot of really, really awesome stuff that you can get off of this. Uh, the fact that it only has a crew cost of two is really nice as well because you can kind of just go two drop into three drop and then crew it immediately if you need a blocker, crew it again on the next attack step. So lots of really great stuff here. I kind of think it's better than the Pyro Helix. Uh, I don't know for sure I'm going to keep them together for now, but that's kind of the way I would lean. Uh, Rush of Vitality is an instant for one and a black target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains lifelink and indestructible until the end of the turn. Uh, what's nice about this is you can use it as an, uh, an aggressive combat trick or a defensive combat trick. Either way, it works very well. Uh, solely because of that indestructible, you can kind of get around some destroy target creature spells, things like that. Um, I don't love it. It is still just a combat trick. It's not going to be a direction that you go necessarily, and so it's definitely not a first pick, but not a bad one for sure. Uh, Weldfast Monitor 
Uh, it's a 3-2 for 3 of any color. You can pay a red and it gains Menace until the end of the turn. Menace is a very good mechanic in Limited where essentially it just means it can't be blocked by less than two creatures. Uh, and so they're going to have to double block it or do more uh, if they want to stop that, that toughness or that power coming through. It's not a super powerful card. The reason I don't like it is because you do have to leave up the red to give it Menace. Uh, and that's not a huge cost to pay, but when you're trying to curve out, that does set you back a little bit. So I don't love it for that reason. And to be honest, we just have much better picks already in the pack. Our first uncommon is Long Finned Sky Whale. Uh, it is a 4-3 for 2 and 2 blue. Uh, it does have flying, it can and it can block only creatures with flying. So obviously no blocking on the ground. Kind of fine. This is looking to be an aggressive card anyway. Uh, it's a little weird that it's in blue, but that's fine. Uh, it's a giant whale that flies. That's pretty cool. I'm in. Um, I don't know. I have to assume, I guess, that it's better than the other cards here. Uh, just because it can get a lot more uh, damage through fairly quickly. Uh, Renegade Freighter, obviously you're tapping a creature, uh, at least one, to be able to crew it, to then attack with it. It does have Trample, which is very, very good, I already mentioned, but... I think that this is a little bit more lucrative and just kind of good on its own. Uh, and so I'd prefer to take that here. Uh, Chandra's Pyro Helix, very, very good, but uh, I'd rather have a solid destroy target creature than two points of burn. Uh, Quicksmith Genius is two and a red for a three, two. Uh, when an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you can discard a card. And if you do, you draw a card. So this basically gives you a rummage ability. Uh, that's actually pretty powerful, if I'm honest. It's much more of an engine card, so it's not necessarily encouraging you to be aggressive. Uh, this isn't necessarily a card that you'd want to attack with very often, solely because if you lose it, you lose your engine, which isn't great. Uh, but it is a very powerful card. Being able to rummage a couple times off of this, and you've got your value. Uh, it's also a 3-2 for 3, which is a little understated, but serviceable for sure. Um, I kind of, I still, I think, have to go with the Sky Whale, though. I think that that's a much better card. It does get blocked in the air, I will say, by a lot of Thopters and things like that. But uh, I do think that it just deals with them so nicely, and it gives you a good, like, even if it's just playing as a, well, yeah, as a, as a blocker for the Thopters. Uh, that's an interesting sentence. Uh, it does a very good job of holding those off, so I actually like it quite a lot. This Quicksmith Genius does seem good, though. I think I'm still going to go with the Sky Whale. Uh, I'm, I'm executive decision. Um, Creeping Mold is two and two green, actually a very classic card for uh, sorcery, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Uh, this hits a lot solely because it hits artifacts. Uh, that's kind of the way I would look at this. You're probably going to blow up a vehicle. Uh, at minimum, you're going to hit like a servo, uh, which you don't necessarily want to do, but this does count as a pretty decent removal spell in this format. Um, I don't know if it's better than the Sky Whale. Uh, I feel like it very easily could be solely because it hits artifacts. Enchantments, you know, sure, you might hit one or two. Uh, lands, you're probably not going to care to hit a land. Uh, a lot of the time it's just basic lands, so why would you? Uh, you might hit like an Aether Hub, which would be pretty cool, but uh, even that's not super threatening. It just enables your opponent. So, I would argue probably the Sky Whale is better here. Uh, the artifacts, destroying target artifact, though, is pretty key. I could kind of see going either way. I'm going to lean towards the creature. Uh, games are won with creatures generally and limited, so that's kind of my thought process there. That might be incorrect. Feel free to correct me in the comment section. Uh, but our rare is Cultivator's Caravan. Uh, very cool card. It's a 5-5 five five for three of any color. Uh, tap it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool or crew it for three. Uh, so you can make it a artifact creature for if you tap down a creature with power three or greater. Uh, very, very cool. Um, I do really like this card, to be honest. It's a five, five for three. It's pretty good. Uh, not only that, but it ramps you. So there's a lot of upside here. I do think I take that over the, the Sky Whale. It's a little bit tricky, but I do think that that's a better card. Uh, so I am going to take the Cultivator's Caravan. Uh, please feel free, of course, to disagree in the comment section. A pr a probably a good portion of you guys did play Kaladesh. Uh, so feel free, please, please inform me better uh, and inform everybody else. So that's my pick. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe and please make sure to enter our giveaway. Don't forget, uh, Monday, January 27th is the, the the, the announcement day so make sure you enter before then but thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next crack a pack video